the hope to which God has called you, the power at God at work in Christ, and the spirit of wisdom and revelation be with you all. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your steadfast love in the morning. And your faithfulness by night. To the music of the lute and the harp. To the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. All the work of your hands I sing for joy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron 
and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. But take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statues, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. Word of God, word of life. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be fulfilled. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you blot out our transgressions. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the oceans far away. You may curve the mountains by your power, you are of power of You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. A reading from 2 Corinthians. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also sow bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. 
you will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel on this Thanksgiving Day is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee, and he entered a village, and ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean, but the other nine? Where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. I think Will and Grace are here. Come on, come on down, William and Grace. Good morning. We're not even going to sit down today. We are going to look at this beautiful fruit and vegetables. And you know who brought that, don't you? Oh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get this mic so we can listen to you talk. Here we go. Do you know who brought the fruit and vegetables? Um, uh, mommy. Not your mommy. Um. Your grandma brought them. Come on up here. We're going to look at these. I want you to think about all, look at them, look at them all first, look at all the different fruits and vegetables, and what's that? That's not fruit or vegetable, is it? It's grape. Well, not, the, not grape, under the grapes, what's that? Can you see it? Bread. bread. There's some bread there too, yes. And there's all sorts of other things. There's corn. 
There is corn, right? What's your favorite of all those things? Um, your favorite to eat? Um, gra um grapes and, gr and corn. Grapes and corn. How about you, William? Apples and grapes. Apples and grapes. Now, let's think about one of those things. You both like grapes, so let's think about the grapes. Do you know how grapes grow? Did you ever see grapes growing? No. Do they grow on a tree? No, they don't. They do not grow on a tree, no. Do they grow under the ground? Do you have to dig them up like you do with potatoes? No. no. Grapes grow on a, on a vine, on a grape vine. And the sour grapes go in, in, in the, this grape. There are sour grapes, and, there's, and those are sweeter? The red ones are sweeter? Mm -hmm. Okay, they, they, these grapes, they grow on a vine, and they come up, and, you, and who, water, who waters the grapes? Um, um, I don't know. Do you think they need water? I, and yes. Yes, they do need water. And where do they get it, do you think? Um, um, what comes down from the sky for the um, grapes to give them water? Um, rain. rain. Rain does, yes. Yeah, and, and that's blueberries. That's not blueberries. Those are purple grapes. Oh. Black grapes, they're called. Yeah. And, and apples grow in a tree. Apples grow in a tree. Where does corn grow? Um, Did you guys, you went on the hayride? And you picked some corn on the yeah. hayride. Where yeah. did it grow? Yeah. Um, on big? Um, big plants. Big plants, that's right. And we picked it, didn't we? And the plants were kind of sharp. We had to be careful not to cut our hands when we, when we picked that corn. And who, grew, who plants that corn? Um, farmers. Farmers plant the corn, that's right. And, and then people pick it, and then where do we get the corn? Where do you think? From the market. From the market, yeah. So somebody has to be at the market to bring it there and to sell it to us. So all those, all those are people that we can thank God for. We can thank God for the grapes. We can thank God for the farmers that plant the corn and the grapes. We can thank God for the rain that comes down. We can thank God for the people at the market who bring it there so we can buy it and bring it home. We can thank God for our moms and dads who cook it for us. Well, they don't cook grapes, but they do cook corn. And we can be thankful for so many things. So let's say a thank you prayer to God for all the ways that he, that he feeds us and gives us good things. Yeah, yeah. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for food, for grapes and apples and corn and bread. Thank you for the people who plant it, for the rain that waters it, for the people at the market who sell it, for parents who cook it for us except not grapes. Thank you for your love, that we can know that everything you give us is a gift from you because you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming up. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We give you thanks this day, O Lord for all your many blessings, and for the privilege of gathering together this day to worship and thank you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Did you ever notice how many of our hymns and psalms of thanksgiving are collective? It's not come, you thankful person, come. It's come, ye thankful people, come. And we don't say, sing, now I thank my God, but now thank we all, our God. There's something about giving thanks that just cries out to be done with other people. That's the sad part of today's Gospel reading, that even though Jesus healed ten lepers, Ten friends who had shared a hard life together, even though he had made all of them well. The one leper had to give thanks to God alone. Jesus' first response is a sad one. Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? It is good to give thanks together. That's what's special about Thanksgiving Day. Not that this is the only day of the year we can give thanks, I would certainly hope not, but that a time has been set aside for us as a nation to give thanks intentionally together. It's kind of like celebrating a birthday. 
our grandson Eli, who lives up in Minnesota, turns six today. He has chosen for his special birthday dinner bacon and McDonald's. <laughs> so there goes the turkey dinner in that house. <laughs> now, we can't be with him in person, but our whole family will be thinking of him today. We've sent presents and cards. We'll try to phone later on. We'll all do our best to show Eli how precious he is to all of us. Of course, Eli could have his birthday today without any acknowledgement. He'd still turn six. He'd still be thankful for his family. And he could eat turkey like the rest of us. But there's something special about having a day when others celebrate with you so that you can give thanks to God together for all his blessings. It's good to know as we give thanks that we are not alone. Today, as we raise our voices in thanksgiving, we know that we are not alone. We're part of a celebration, a symphony, a choir that encompasses all creation. Part of that togetherness is evident as we look around the church this morning. Parents sit with their young children, teaching them the importance of giving thanks together. Extended families are here, some having come a long way to give thanks together. Good friends sit next to each other, knowing that sharing thankfulness is one of the great blessings of friendship. Worshippers are here from other congregations, bearing witness to the unity we share as we thank our God and Savior. Even those who have come alone today, or who are watching our broadcast at home, are no longer alone, because the Holy Spirit unites us. God brings us together as his family, so that we can thank and praise him with one joyful voice. The Thanksgiving choir of which we're a part does not stop at the walls of this building. All across our nation, men, women, and children are thanking God, adding their voices to the song. There are Southern Baptists praising God with clapping hands and loud amens. There are deaf congregations using sign language to share their praise. There are small country churches where 10 or 12 people have gathered to be part of this song. Across our nation, Muslims and Jews, Buddhists and Hindus pause this day to give thanks to God. There are people traveling, saying a silent prayer of thanksgiving as they move down the road. There are hungry and homeless people gathering in churches and missions and in their own communities, thanking God with us for his loving care. All our voices are different, but together we raise one hymn of thanksgiving to our God. Even the heavens join our song. Angels and archangels, saints and apostles, all raise their voices in thanksgiving for God's great salvation. Moses, who urged his people to give thanks for the promised land, joins our song. St. Paul, who urged us to give thanks in all circumstances and to share the blessings of what God has given us, sings with us today as part of the heavenly chorus. Our loved ones who have gone before us in death, who we miss so deeply during the holidays, are still singing with us, glorifying God for love that conquers death. But even the voices of the whole human race and all the songs of heaven are not enough to thank our God. Our celebration of thanksgiving is contagious. The scriptures tell us that all of creation joins in the praise of God. As Jesus told the Pharisees on Palm Sunday, if every voice were silent, the rocks and stones themselves would sing. And so as we thank God on this Thanksgiving day, we're accompanied by the wonderful song of nature, the chattering of the squirrels, the singing of the birds, 
the crunching of the autumn leaves, the whistling of the wind. They all join together to thank and praise our God. From the depths of the ocean to the stars above, the universe shouts its thanksgiving. Today, we're gathered together to give thanks to our God. We are not alone as we sing God's praises. We're singing with one another, with a thankful nation, with all the company of heaven, and with creation itself. The song we sing will never equal everything our God has done for us, but still it is a beautiful song filled with love, praise, and thankfulness to our Creator and Redeemer. Praise be to God. Let us thank our Lord together. Amen. Confess our faith in God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Welcoming God's reign of righteousness and mercy, let us pray for God's people of every time and place. Holy God, you invite us to share abundantly in every good work. As congregations join together in worship, make us bold in our generosity 
so that all may be fed in body and spirit. Lord, in your mercy. On this day of thanksgiving, you crown the year with your goodness in creation. Supply seed to the sower, bread for food, and a shared harvest for all. Lord, in your mercy. Lift up First Nations, native peoples, and indigent tribes who live in many places across the world. Support those who teach and preserve our many cultures that they may be understood as reflections of your diverse creation. Lord, in your mercy. Put an end to poverty, homelessness, and hunger. Fill our tables with healthy food. We pray for those who are lonely, stressed, and sick, especially those we name now, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Open our hearts to be cheerful givers, sharing abundantly in your good work. Teach us to give thanks to you for every blessing and work of healing in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort all who grieve with the assurance of hope that all who have died will be raised with Christ. We remember and honor those whose witness of the faith echoes beyond the grave. Lord, in your mercy. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought light into being. For your word of life, O God, we, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and grace. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope. And deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The love of God surround you. The grace of Christ release you, and the Holy Spirit be your guide and your strength, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.